Hello everyone, welcome back to the A&J podcast episode number four. Uh, so at the time that you guys are listening to this, gym should have been open for about two and a half weeks to this point. So we thought we'd do a nice little special episode on your environment and how that affects not only your ability to succeed, but your motivation and also your work ethic. Like you're going to work a lot harder if you're you surround yourself with good people. How are you doing today, James Holden Fitness? All good. Aaron good. Watkins, personal. What's your, what's your personal one, Aaron? Tra- Aaron personal AW trainer. Personal Trainer. Aaron Watkins, personal trainer. Um, good. Glad to hear it. So we have already recorded this intro once for Clara, uh, just to, if we sound a little bit more awkward than usual, I may have messed up the recording of the audio ever so slightly. So we go again. We were only about this far in. So from now, this is all brand new conversation and we have not already played this through. So that intro might have felt a little bit more awkward than normal because we've already done it once. So James Holden Fitness, how would you describe your environment and how would you say it affects you personally? Not only with the gym, but business and... and yeah, no, I think the key thing to stress is we're not necessarily just talking about the gym and fitness, just general life. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I try and definitely surround myself with positive people, um, try and keep a very close-knit group. Yeah, 100%. You know, like, I, I'll only class certain people as my... I, I, I don't have, like, 100 friends, 50 friends, you yeah, know what I mean? yeah. I'll only consider a, a handful of people you, you, genuine friends. I would say I have two, almost two different groups of friends. Yeah. I have my like friends that I've had for years that are maybe the people that I go and piss about with and do, you know, whatever. And we mess about and we have a good laugh and I love them to bits. Mm. But then I have like my work friends, like my business friends, like people that are going to help benefit my ability to work and put in a, like a good output of work. Yeah. As well as those who help me succeed with like my goals in fitness um because i find it it helps me to separate the two like my two almost two it's almost like having a double life right. like i have my business side i'm very much like i can switch between them like when i'm when i say my business side when i'm with clients and interacting with people none of it's fake it's all me i'm not like putting on a persona i might have a little bit more energy than maybe i would normally if i was just chatting shite to my friends mm. none of it's fake but like the way I am at work, as it is with everyone, it is very different to how I am around my friends. Like I, I'm still the same me, just maybe I like to be a little bit more motivated at work. Obviously, it's slightly different when you work, when you are self-employed compared to when you're employed, because when you're employed, you're being asked and told what to do. Whereas if I don't have the motivation to work hard, nothing gets done. Yeah. And then the only person that affects is me. There's no one like there's no one really above me that can feel the effects of my laziness. So I like to help you know keep myself around good people to help me stay focused on on a goal or on what I want to do. Um, Not a bad answer, is it? So that that that's sort of what my like how I perceive my environment. Like, do you have anything you to add to that? Or <laughs> um, I know I tend to ramble every now and again. Uh, <laughs> not really. No, not really. I just yeah. Again, for me, I mean. In terms of surrounding myself with you, for example, you know, like me and you, very similar goals, very similar interests, I say, in regards to gym and a business point of view. So I think that's extremely important. Um, You know, as you said about having sort of friends away from the gym who aren't into that, away from a business point of view, you know, that's also extremely important because you need a balance as well at the end of the day. You know, like you want to separate your personal life and, you know, going out and enjoying yourself, going for some food hanging out with your mates um, and and separating that from the gym and a business point of view. Yeah, I mean, when we say the gym, I think people would take that as we take the gym like super, super seriously and we're pro bodybuilders or whatever. I'd say I'd take it... I take it semi-seriously. I I think I take it a bit more serious than you, I guess, in Uh, terms of for my my goals, I guess. At this point in time. But I I did used to take it way more serious than I do now. Now I just kind of... I I think now it's sort of, for you, I think it's about keeping up your health keeping up your image well i just use it to like complement my life that's what yeah rather yeah, than yeah. take it over yeah i used to let fitness take over my life mm. and so if i ate bad one meal or if it was someone's birthday and we went out for food and drinks or whatever i'd drink water and i would choose whatever like fit my macros even if i'm on a like birthday night out or something yeah whereas now i just let fitness complement my life yeah yeah, so yeah i still go and enjoy myself and do all these things knowing that it's not going to have a massive effect on me 
personally. In fact, I'm going to enjoy my life way, way more mm. if I allow myself to go and do these things as alongside I still train six days a week. I still eat right 90% of the time, 95% yeah. of the time. Yeah. Like, if we're not super obsessed with the gym that we let it almost run our lives to the most part, but it is a big part of our lives. Obviously, that's our business. So if we... I think we may have touched on this last episode the other day when we were recording. Like, if we look bad, it reflects badly on cool. us. Cool. So, like, we do take it somewhat seriously, as you can imagine. Um, so, how would you say your environment, just specifically on a business term now, affects your work ethic? If you were, say, out with your friends, and yeah. or you had some, like, massive, big, important bit of work you needed to do, yeah. maybe it's some programming or something, yeah. you have a deadline, you need to get it done in the next day or two, would you surround yourself with your with your normal friends and carry on with that? Or would you like hide yourself away? Or would you like seek out certain people? I think, I think work comes first. I mean, yeah. in terms of that, you know, if I have work I need to do in terms of programming, um, client check-ins, for example, that will come first, no matter what. So, uh, just to, just to add to that, do you stick to, do you give yourself like certain hours of the day you can Yeah, work? definitely. Because definitely. obviously nine till five is like the yeah. standard. That's practice. what I mean in terms of where we come as well, back to the routine point of view. Um, you know, routine is just so, such a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, in terms of when I train, when I have clients, when I do check-ins. Um, so yeah, in that, in that sense, yeah, I do. Um, have you got anything to add to that at all, mate? Or? No, I would just say like, I, I definitely used to, to let my job take over my life. Being self-employed, it's very easy to just start booking people in when and what, like wherever, whenever, and not being able to say no. I think as well, to a degree, being self-employed, depending on you know your mentality, it can be quite easy to sort of lose track and lose yeah. and lose your sort of way. Um, you know, if you if you get distracted because being self-employed, we haven't necessarily we don't work a nine to a nine to five, or we yeah. don't have certain hours that we need to I work. Mean, it's going to sound like we could, we could in theory take a month off. Yeah. We could you know in mean? theory work whenever we want, when yeah. we want at any time in the day. Obviously that becomes a little bit more difficult when you have clients that have to work around their work and things. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it would also be, it'd be just as easy to let your work take over your life as it would to just completely forget about your work and just want to take time off. Like there's a balance to be had there. Yeah. But there we go. I think that just comes down to the point of today which is sort of who you surround yourself and then also you as an individual which obviously yeah. reflects on who you do surround yourself with yeah so obviously these days like social media is massive right yeah and i've got a bit of a i thought this was a banger of a question when i wrote this down but i've realized <laughs> Go that on, then. that'd be good I, i've realized this may not be the room to ask it to just in a in a we're already pretty set in our ways kind of thing but to someone listening they might sort of resonate with this point a little bit do you find following like Instagram models, maybe if you're a girl or like fitness personalities, not so much bodybuilders because bodybuilders are, you know, they're really out here working hard. That's their living. They get on stage. They have to look good. Yeah. But I know I've mentioned in previous episodes, I learned a lot from these fitness personalities. Do you find following them and just constantly seeing how good they look all the time and everything, do you find that motivating or distracting? If you like maybe wind back the clock to when you were younger and it affected you a bit more. I know that these days... Do you days mean, what, in really... terms of general, you know, your cliche Love Island sort of star? Yeah, or... yeah, like your Love Island star, your Gymshark athlete, like your David Lades, that kind of thing, like... Um, I'd say when I was younger, I sort of paid a bit more interest to it in terms of yeah. looking, I wouldn't say up to these people, but looking at their social medias and thinking, you know, oh, he's got such a good yeah, physique. I want to look like I that. I want to look like that sort of thing. Nice. Um, but now I don't really pay too much attention to it, I guess. I mean, I, yeah. I still... Do you follow some fitness people within the industry? But, you know, being a bit older now, I know they are sort of a bit more genuine in these sort of, you know, reality TV stars, yeah. I guess, to a, a certain degree. Um, I mean, if we were to just, like, keep it... So try and keep yourself in that mindset of someone who who does follow these people. Yeah. Would you... Maybe you're, not even in a sense that you look up to it. Like, you just follow them. And your Instagram feed, as you're scrolling, is yeah, constant yeah, yeah. athletes, constant, you know. Would you find that to, like, distract you in the sense that you're looking at them and going, oh, why don't I look like that? I've been training three, four years. Why don't I look like David Lade? Why don't I have these, you know? 
yeah. th- these insane results that these people I are think, getting. I think when you're saying that, oh, I think it does come down to the person that you are. Me, myself, um, I wouldn't really get too distracted by it. Um, you know, I sort of, I'd look at him and think, you know, obviously he sort of worked hard for that yeah. physique yeah, and yeah. it'll be great to get to that one day. Um, but for other people maybe who, you know, just your average sort of Joe who's sort of scrolling on Instagram, seeing all these people, yeah. I'd, I'd try and stay away from it as much as you can um because yeah. you shouldn't you shouldn't really be comparing yourself to these people whose and job it is to look whose good. job it is to look good like, and then there's also so many different factors that come into it i mean as we touched on in terms of steroids yeah and then also genetics and you know age there's so many different factors realistically these people it's their job to look good so exactly they they that. can spend four hours a day training and also and have, they have a lot of money they have a lot of money, well. money to do whatever they want you know what i'm saying like food wise they get all them. They get a lot of their meals prepped for them. They don't have to spend time cooking. They can spend four hours working out. They can do six hours of cardio a day because that is their life. Their livelihood is to look good. Bit excessive six hours of cardio a day. I know, but just like as a as a general thought, like their their job is to look good and to keep themselves in that shape. So they're gonna do whatever they can in their time to maintain that because as soon as they slip up everyone's hating and the thing is, everyone just jumps on him there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion oh, like 100%. i think you know like if it's your job as a model i, I don't know where yeah. the fuck we've gone with this like, <laughs> but if it's your yeah. job as a model to sort of look good um and you know keep yourself in shape um i just think basically the, the point was is don't compare yourself to these people too much i would say because it 100%. is their job yeah if you exactly. work a nine till five and you've got all these stresses in not that these like instagram people don't have any stress in their life but it's a very different kind of stress if you've got family if you've got young children if you've got you know other commitments and you can't and and the full-time job you're going to struggle to work out as much as them you're going to you know not have the sponsorships they have so you have to out of pocket you know prepare your food and everything i just think if you if you, you'll know if, if we're saying this and you're hearing this and you're thinking oh yeah no i do look up to these people a bit too much you'll you'll know who we're talking to here unfollow some of these people like it's all right to have i would find it motivating to look at david Lade and say oh i want that i want his physique that is a good looking bloke like as in like body wise he's he's a good looking bloke if i was to look at that and go, oh, why don't I look like that? If I start asking the wrong questions, it very quickly goes from I'm being motivated by following this person to I'm being distracted by following this person. Mm. And I think there's definitely a balance to be had there. So if you're looking at, um, I'm just going to pull a name off the top of my head, like Jen Salter or someone like that. Females would know this one. And you're looking at her and you're going, well, why don't I look like that? Instead of I want to look like that. Like, I think you're just asking yourself the wrong questions. And at that point in time, you need to maybe evaluate how you're regarding these people. Yeah. And I think I was guilty of that. I think when I sort of first started training, um, there was a good sort of quote that I read somewhere when I first started training. And it was something like, don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 10. Yeah, and what that Instagram. And what that means is, you know, like these people are years ahead of you in terms of training um in in terms of you know the amount of time they put into the gym supplement wise genetic wise so don't compare yourself to anyone really just stay in your lane um and again surround yourself with good people who who want you to who want you to succeed and achieve in life so if you're someone i may i mean we kind of went big on this in like the second episode but i would say if you're someone who doesn't have if you're new to the gym and we say this all the time if you're new to the gym and you're trying to find a way to get motivated motivated and start training, I know we say this all the time, but definitely try and go with a friend Yeah. because that's yeah. going to help your work ethic. Yeah, you and your friend are not going to... And don't take like a friend you're going to sit there and laugh and joke with all the time and go be like, oh, look, we're in the gym. Uh-huh. Take a friend you're going to be competitive with. Take a friend that you're going to want to do better than in that session. Like say you're like when me, me and Jay are benching or me and Jay are squatting, there's no point in time where I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm, I need to take some weight off here because yeah. this is too hard. I know eventually it gets to the point where you're going to struggle and you have to. But in mm. terms of like when we're doing our top sets, 
or I know I don't know if Jay thinks like this, but when me and Jay are doing our top sets, at no point am I thinking like, oh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to back off, until like, you know, we get to a point where we're both tired. Like I'm not trying to. Basically, what I'm saying is, be like, you've got to be competitive with the person you're training with because it will help you push yourself. Like mm. Jay is stronger than me on back. Um, I won't make any excuses here. Uh, <laughs> surgery. Um, no, but Jay Jay's stronger than me on back and legs which has massively helped me try and lift more weight essentially because I'm there like, well, if he's squatting 120 for for reps, I want to squat 120 for reps. I don't want to have to keep saying, oh no, we need to take a 10 off or we need yeah. to take a five off or whatever. And I've got to go a little bit careful. Um, but like in general, I can manage most things. But yeah, when I see Jay squatting 120 for three sets, I don't want to have to go on the second set and be like, oh, I know we're doing three top sets uh, here, but I'm only hitting one rep at 120. Can mm. I drop it to 110 or one? You know, I'm I'm basically pushing myself. I'm fighting within myself to lift more, be stronger, and I think that helps me progress as well. Like, yeah. Even during lockdown, my my little twig legs, I would say, have grown a fair bit yeah. without leg extensions, without yeah. hamstring curls, no, without any definitely. machines, without anything, purely because I'm you know pushing yourself more. Yeah, I mean, I've never I like training legs, but. And, and I push myself when I train legs in the gym, but I, I ignore certain movements more than others. Like, I didn't really train hamstrings before. A bit of an oversight on my behalf, but, like, I've got issues with my lower back. So, a lot of the hamstring movements require your lower back. And I, I've always been a little bit tentative about, like, you know, overstraining myself. Like, even the other week, yeah, we were doing deadlifts. With, although the bar was, like, lower to the ground, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I ended up pretty messed up for like i yeah, say pretty um, messed up for a few days i was I'd messed up week, and then for a week, week i was still feeling the pain yeah. of just purely because it was probably something i probably shouldn't have gone quite so hard there but you know leaps and bounds you learn yeah but yeah if you're struggling with your environment and you don't like the gym environment take a friend but don't take a friend you're going to get distracted by take a friend who's going to yeah. help push you i think well with that point as well um you know if i'm <clears throat> going back to the point of me being stronger back and legs you're definitely stronger say chest and shoulders i say yeah, like, so yeah. it you know it's swings and roundabouts is that the correct saying swings yeah, and roundabouts. so the what i'm trying to say away. is you know like when i'm when i'm training with someone I, I want i want them to be stronger than me in a way because then it pushes me harder yeah um yeah. i i much prefer training with people that are stronger than me and you know maybe even i wouldn't say the better than me but a bit more maybe experienced in a yeah. way because then i can learn off it bounce off it and it, it just tends to be a pretty good session whereas if you're training with someone who's a lot weaker than you and yeah. you know it's it's just it's just not a great it's vibe like, is it I've, really like, i've trained with a lot of my, a lot of my friends aren't really like a lot of my friends outside the gym that is aren't gym goers they're not they're not like your stereotypical gym lad. They don't really care. Yeah. And when they do go to the gym and they want to train with me, I'm more than happy to train with them. Of course, of course. But I have such a worse session because it's going to sound quite selfish, but you have to keep unloading weights and changing weight plates and things. And it takes that extra, extra time. And then you're trying to, you know, give them good techniques so they don't injure themselves and that kind of thing. Like if you're training with someone who's, it's going to sound a bit harsh, but levels below you, kind of thing in a strength sense like they're just a lot weaker than you because if i've been training for five years and my friends just getting into the gym unless they're like either got a lot of weight on me or a superhuman they're not going to be stronger than me for the 90 yeah. percent like 95 percent of them aren't stronger than me yeah um if you have to keep changing your weights and you have to keep you know taking time to coach them nothing wrong with that like take your time teach your friends but if you're doing that every session of the week and it's not competitive and it's too easy for you and too hard for them, you're not making any, you're progress. Not making any progress yourself. Like yeah, you have to be a little bit selfish. Of course. Of course. Like, you have to, you have to think about yourself. And at that point in time, you know, if you're someone who's going to struggle to get self-motivated, you can't take a friend because you're just going to stand there talking. It's going to sound very biased again, but you're the type of person who needs a personal trainer or a coach to take you somewhere that you're currently not taking yourself mm. unless you're so self-motivated enough to get yourself you know to learn to to do things to keep yourself working hard you know 
you you need someone to help get you there, and obviously that's what a coach is ultimately for. Definitely, definitely. Um, do you have anything else you want to add to that point? Um, I think. Well, I'll go in terms of you, in terms of you know, like pushing for sort of my my weight. Say, I think it is important though. If it is out of your limits, don't go for it. You know, if 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 you're on say, if you're squatting with your mate say, and he's doing one twenty, one thirty for reps, and you know you physically just can't do it, just don't. Don't, don't try don't and match his over, weight. Yeah, don't feel overly pressured. Don't feel overly pressured. And also, you've got to remember that, you, you know, know, you're not on his level just yet. So, you know, back off. Put your weight on. Don't ego left. I think that's massive as well. Yeah, don't, don't, don't have just bad leave your ego out just the door. because you're trying to catch up to your friends. Exactly. Like, exactly. Still do you, like, I know I said about how I'm competitive with, like, Jay when we're squatting or, you know, rows or whatever. It's because I know that I could probably lift that weight in a in a way. Yeah. Maybe I can't get as many reps, but, but I know, you know that you I can, can get it. you know a good few, few. You know, like even when we're squatting one twenty early, you doing what five five to eight five. Yeah, it's around right. Five yeah. to eight reps or something, and I was, you know, getting three or four, in the in the early sets, two or three in the later sets. You know, so I'm trying to I I, I can do the reps. If I couldn't do one solid rep of one twenty because I can't go deep enough, I'm not gonna do one twenty. Yeah. So the only reason I'm pushing myself to be competitive is purely because I know that I can get a couple reps and maybe that competitive spirit is going to help me get an extra rep. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not using it to ego lift and have bad form or whatever. My squat form isn't amazing when I go heavy. I, I'm aware of that. But mm. like in terms of I'm not going to injure myself doing it, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm measured. You've got, yeah. you got to be measured in your in your approach. You can't. You know, one wrong move and you, you end up injured for months, like we were saying Definitely. the other day. So it's not worth pushing yourself too hard and messing yourself up. Um, I think just because we're getting to the end of that topic, basically now we're recording using my camera. Um, we can only record like 25 minutes, half an hour at a time, just to explain briefly. Um, before the camera shuts off, like stops the recording and I have to restart it. It You know, it's, it's not like a connected to the computer at all. But that allows us to record on our mics properly when my laptop isn't doing a Windows 10 update. <laughs> so basically, every you know, you guys shouldn't notice any change here. But I'm literally just gonna pause the the audio recording, pause the camera, and then resync up, and we'll be joining you. In, well, you won't notice a thing, but and we're back. So hopefully, if I've worked my editing magic like I normally do, you know, a bit of a wizard, um, <laughs> you guys won't have noticed anything different here. Um, other than maybe we've moved around slightly just because we took like 30 seconds if that I think it looks the same to me yeah it looks probably good. does um, so we're going to move on to the next sort of when, when we record these episodes we have notes like kind of like question forms and then we you may notice we waffle from there yeah. and we just sort of express our views and our, our advice our recommendations so we're going to go on to the next question I have here do you look to surround yourself with any like type of people specifically or like is um, it, do you see anyone and you go like i don't want to be around you yeah i definitely like definitely i mean i want to surround myself with people that are positive all about succeeding motivating if, if someone is against that and someone you know they don't really value that at all why would, why would i want to hang around with them yeah, true true it, i mean for me it's it uh, like going back to my work friends compared to my outside of work friends my outside of work friends make some choices that i used to make myself like when you know when you've got no when you work nine till five and then you finish work and you finish work like whereas we're working around the clock like we've got messages to reply to we, we got ideas we're trying to come up with you know checking in with people whatever it is like i kind of stop not i didn't obviously covid didn't help this i didn't stop hanging around with my friends but i stopped hanging around with them in certain environments because i knew that it was gonna you know make me make poor choices that would affect me for a couple of days or so um not like there's anything wrong with it just person in my personal preferences like uh, i've been sober for like a year and a half now it's not that i'm never drinking again um Come June 21st, baby. Come June 21st. Like, I'll go out, but I'm just not going to be the same part. Like, 
I'm not going to go out every weekend or every, you know, four times a week like I used to yeah. or anything like that. I go out like once a month or once every couple months, if that. Yeah. I think that also comes with like my friendship group of growing up a little bit. Like there's only a couple of us that probably will, you know, it's like, it's more of a novelty thing. Like we'll just go out every now and again as a novelty more than we just used to go out for the sake of going out. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then also like in certain environments, they'll they'll you know they'll be drinking or whatever at the pub whatever and not that i still go to the pub but i won't you know go clubbing or whatever with them because i'm not interested in being uh, not that i get bad hangovers but i'm not interested in feeling tired lethargic or anything the day after mm. like i want to be <clears throat> i want to be functional every opportunity i can and so whether yeah. that's so you know not meeting up in dodgy places to go and smoke marijuana look, like we used to or i think especially with our line of work is we get we get everyone self-employed like i think we get one day off if that a week realistically probably like one full day off. that's what i mean if, if even that really uh and then obviously we, you've got training on top of that so if we're going out on the lash getting smashed Oh, that rhymed. I was going to think of something else to rhyme it with. But I no. mean, we, we could, in theory, take every single morning of the week off and go out every single night. But it's just, it's, but you're that's not, gonna, not my life. I yeah, don't want to do that. It's going to mess you up. Like, your ability to perform is going to be messed up. Not only training, but your, uh, your, your sessions with your clients are going to suffer. Your engagement is going to suffer because you're not going to be so, like energetic you're physically going to suffer you're mentally yeah, going to suffer physi- it's just not worth it's just not worth it so that's sort of what i mean by like i stopped hanging around in certain environments i still see my friends but now it's more like we go play football we go play basketball you know we go do things that are more more fun without having to affect yeah the next day that kind of thing like, i mean every once in a while there's nothing wrong with it for yeah, instance yeah. i'll probably I may have a drink every few months, maybe. Yeah, um, a few days. F- but to be fair with Jay, it doesn't often go past, like, what, 10 oh, p.m.? You so. Speak for yourself, mate. <laughs> speak for yourself. I've got an excuse. I've been sober a long time. You nah, are but, fair. Like, it, it, it's not don't do it. It's just pick your times to do it. Yeah. Like, just don't do it every weekend. Don't do it. Uh, uh, or if you're going to, then make sure you give yourself time to recover so that it's not affecting your work, your workouts, your whatever else. Like I used to go out on uh, every student night, Wednesday, so Monday, Wednesday, sometimes Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Mm. And if it's a bank holiday, then Sunday, obviously, got to be done. Um, <laughs> and you can think, if you're going out four times a week, you are, without knowing it, going to feel way more tired, even though I didn't get hung over. You're going to feel way more tired, way more lethargic. You're going to lift less weight. You're going to be less productive. At the time, I worked in accounts, right. um, nine till five. You'd think that I would want to be really highly productive, but to me, working with numbers was like relatively right, I've easy. Got a, I've anything. got a sort of a question or a topic for you based on that then. Yeah. What would your advice be for sort of people who are at uni in terms of balancing gym life and uni life and uni work? How would you go about that yourself? I mean, it's hard for me to answer because I didn't go to uni. Advice? What would your advice be? My advice would be enjoy yourself, but be measured in your approach to that. Yeah. Don't, don't like... I, f- I think... It's I a think... hard one to answer if you've not... Even give advice. It's hard for me to give to advice to people in a situation I don't fully I think understand. for me, if I was given advice, it would be control what you can control in terms of at uni. <laughs> so you can control your yeah. meals. You can control your water intake. You can control what you drink. You can control when I you train, how you train. Water intake was massive for me. When I was yeah. partying, I was drinking four litres of water a day. And I think that also lent itself to not having hangovers and always being hydrated. So I yeah. didn't feel awful. I guess, like I said, I went out on a lot of student nights. So I know a lot of students. Um, but I wouldn't say I know the, the, the uni life well enough to give my two pence on whether you should drink or not. Like, yeah, you're going to drink. You're at uni. Mm. maybe limit yourself to a two days a week or you know yeah. or limit yourself to days before or nights before your rest day yeah you know i mean like rather than training uh, rather than going out like i was four times a week and messing up your training four or five times a week and also it just catches up to you in the long run you feel so much more tired you won't notice until you stop but you're gonna feel so much more tired at the moment 
than when you you know you're not drinking all the time or whatever you know i think that's quite a unique situation to uni though i don't know too many working adults that go out four times a week <laughs> off the top of my head no i mean i probably don't know too many working adults outside of the gym <laughs> do you know what i mean i don't i don't just hang around with like 30 40 year old blokes um nothing wrong with that if you do but I just yeah, it, it's kind of hard for me to give my give advice to any, any to the people in a situation I don't massively understand. Whereas I've worked nine to five, um, I've worked lots of different job roles, I've worked and partied all the time. Like I think we're both well, we are both still quite young, so the partying days you're still kind of in them, and you'll realise that when the clubs reopen, you still just want to go out and especially as a single lad, so da- ladies, hit him up. Um, <laughs> no, so like, yeah, it, it's it's just, it's it's hard to, to sort of give advice on that, do you know what I mean? Like, and also not, go, you know, having not gone out in so long and not done anything in so long, it's just, it, it just isn't something I really remember too well, to be honest. Mm, mm. Like I remember, I remember when I stopped drinking. Like after it took like two, three months for my brain to like fully function again. Would and you realize... say were you drinking a lot beforehand, or were you? So between, I, I've had the odd like few month break here and there, but yeah. there were some uh, darker times in my existence where I was going out like yeah four times a week purely because. Uh, it was it was like a coping mechanism kind of thing. Um, I went out all the time. I smoked weed all the time. I thought I was some kind of American rapper taking Percocets all the time, like oh, uh, doing all this all this stuff that I do. I regret it. Yes and no. Like, would I recommend anyone does it? No. Was it pretty fun at the time? Yes. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie to anyone. Um, it was it was it like it's like asking was it a good experience like. Was it a good the the way I was doing these things was not a good experience, but the state of mind at the time was quite fun for an adolescent, you know, young lad who had nothing better to do with the time. So like, would I recommend it? Not if you're feeling down. Uh, I say down. That kind of downplays it a little bit. I don't want to use the word depressed. I don't really like using that word, but I guess so. Like, if you're feeling suicidal, if you're feeling you know, some type of way, don't be doing that stuff because it is very, very bad for you. Whereas if you're perfectly healthy and you're young and you want to mess about, I'm not recommending it because it will have effects on you and it is very dangerous. Like, this isn't me ad- ad- endorsing it, but, it, you know, it it is what it is. Like, it's going to happen. Most people try stuff. Most people do things they regret. I was one of them. Um, but that was a very long time ago now, so, yeah, um, which point was I on? Ah, would you say your environment affects your training in the gym? So, when I say that, I mean, what, do you, do you mean in terms of training partners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think training partners is huge. Obviously, we spoke about people being, you know, you know, being competitive with your training partner. Yeah, but I think away from sort of that as yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say, it, let's, let's try and avoid that waffle again. It comes down <laughs> to little factors such as... All right, voice break. Was that? Yeah. Was that? Down. Oh, no, no, no. Still <laughs> hitting puberty, I know. Yeah, uh, sorry, carry on. Nah, in terms of like, even like stuff like spotting and like motivation, etc. Yeah, having a spot, having someone scream at you, so having someone push you. Like, that's what I mean, yeah. I, I think as well, like, knowing when to spot. <laughs> like, it's, it's, oh, nothing pisses me off more when you're sort of... You're grinding out you're, around. Oh, mate, honestly. And then the spotter just comes in and takes just, it or something. Psh, fuck that. Straight off, yeah. So Rather I think, than just, like, helping you Yeah, it. or, like, if, you know, like... Can I just, like, send a message to anyone who ever spots here? Right, I'm going to look directly down the camera lens. I'm going to centre myself. You should zoom in at this point. Yeah, zoom in. If you are a spotter and the person you are spotting is struggling with their weight, do not just lift it off of them unless they ask you to. Yes. Guide them up very gently. I mean, I, I it's going to sound a bit wrong here, but I tend to start with like two fingers on each hand and literally just barely touch the bar. Jay's quite immature, so he's going to laugh at this. 
I'm barely touching the bar and I'm barely lifting it up. I'm giving him just enough energy from my from my strength that he can lift it. Mm. If that makes sense. I'm not lifting it for him. I'm just lending him that little bit of strength he needs to get that bar up. And then if at any point I feel that bar moving without me, I'm moving my hands away and I'm letting him finish that rep. Yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah. if you just lift it off of them, you are taking away from that man's gains. Yeah. You are killing his gains. Stop doing it. Sort it out. Learn how to spot. Rant over. Um, anyone who doesn't have a spotter here, that's going to just completely, you know, not really matter to you. But wow. one day you're going to need a spotter. And and if you get a bad one, then Sorry. this whole rant will make sense. Yeah. I think, well, we've both had experiences with bad spotters. I think yeah. you've more than me by the sounds of that rant. No, I just, it's you know, it's a pet peeve. It's also the part of the reason why I never ask anyone in the gym to spot me unless I know them. I yeah. don't. Yeah. It'd be so easy for me to go up to just a random person and be like, oh, can I get a spot, mate? But you don't know whether they're going to be good or bad. Whereas if I go up to some old, I don't know, I was trying to think of a name. If I go up to Sean, who I know, and I say, your boss man, give me a spot, <laughs> I can say to him, right, Sean, when you're spotting me, don't lift that bar off me. Help me lift the bar. Mm. All right, mate. Mm. And because I know Sean, he's not going to take any offense to that. He's going to go, oh, yeah, you know, now I know what he wants. Mm. I'm, I'm all for it. And then we're going to have a good old, you know, bench session or whatever it is. But, yeah, I think I definitely went on a massive rant there just because it's spotting is one of the things I'm passionate about. Nothing wrong with that, mate. Bad spotting is something that annoys me greatly. So, have that. Back to your, back to your point. <laughs> so... <laughs> You were saying, like, it, it's beneficial to have someone to spot you and have someone to shout at you and all that kind of in thing. In terms like, of training partners, yeah, yeah, it's, it's massive in terms of who you pick. Uh, going back to the point of, you know, motiva <laughs> motivation levels we'll pick on now. I think if you sort of, if you're doing a, a set on, let's pick Rose, for example, and that your, your trainer partner is just stood there on their phone looking about yeah. and you're struggling... I, just motivation helps me, helps me massively personally. I yeah. don't know about you, but if I have someone sort of shouting in my face and encouraging me, that motivates the fuck out of me. Yeah, definitely. And it you helps don't me let massively. That down. Um, yeah, it just makes you grind those extra few reps, and then going back to the spotter, they can just sort of guide you along the way. I think that's also like an ego thing as well, though. You don't want to look like a bitch. Possibly, and then also it comes down to the person you are. Again, you might not, you might not like someone shouting in your face, encouraging you. Yeah, I mean, I personally do. I like oh, I having, I like having like, mate. If I'm trying to get a squat PR, the more people shouting at me, the better, because the more, yeah. I'm, like, the more, almost in the zone I'm gonna get. I say angry, but it's not really angry. I'm not well, mad you, at you anyone. You want to get angry to say? Yeah. I'm not really like, I'm not angry at anyone. I'm just in the zone. I'm just there. I'm ready to lift. Yeah. And you know, the more people shouting in my ear, the better, because you know, same as like. And I've got uh, I've got this down as a topic somewhere, so we won't go too deep into it. But having the right music playing, don't be listening to Mozart when you're trying to <laughs> well, hit I, a bench PR. Some, someone might like Mozart. Yeah, a bit of know. classic, bit of classical FM when you're benching, like oh, mate, just in terms going, of but... scientifically, without going too deep into it, the beats per minute on classical music <laughs> is not what you want it to be to fire you up. I know you're laughing, but like genuinely, <laughs> no, that's fair. Enough. But then it, again, it just comes down to personal preference. There genuinely maybe some can, people that like training like to classical, classical music, FM and you can train to classical FM, but you're not going to want to be hitting PRs to classical FM because it's not going to fire you up. You need something that's going to like get you amped up, get you moving, get you like right. That's it. Same as the gym music winds me up. I mean, we'll save this topic massively. Depending on what gym you go into, Everlast gym music. <laughs> You're laughable, laughable, mate, laughable. What's that one song? Oh, I'm really hungry. Um, you know the one that we oh, were. Fuck oh, fuck no, it. Yeah, I'm really no, like... hungry. Yeah, that one. Yeah. God, mate, it's an awful song, and they play it in the gym. Yeah. Nah, and to be fair, there's better music in. It is just like not Tesco the one. Never yeah. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather train in Tesco. You know what, Loki? Te Tesco actually play bangers. Tesco play some good music in there. To be fair. Shout out Tesco. <laughs> Big up Tesco, you need the business in it, you. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have anything else to add to like partner spotting, like motivation? You said, nah, just um, choose no, your if, partner if, wisely. huh? I would say choose your partner wisely, yeah, no, definitely choose your partner wisely. Um, make sure they encourage you, don't be scared to like 
tell your partner to like get off their phone and stuff or like not in a it, unless they don't like don't not not in a dicky way don't be like oh get off your phone you dickhead <laughs> like just you know in a nice way be like oh it's your set bro like remind them get them get them get them ready get them there get them in the room get them lifting yeah you know i mean it, it's also like in a way a little bit rude like you wouldn't sit at the dinner table texting on your phone all the time so why are you training with someone and sitting there texting on your phone all the time like the odd message like between sets is fine if you're both not doing anything but if you're setting up a if you're if you're loading up plates if you're doing whatever like if it's a say if you're doing landmine rows you only need uh, two of you can't be putting the weights on one side of a bar that kind of thing but or you know but if there's two dumbbells that need setting up especially like when you're loading plates on like a, a home like a standard bar like obviously we both do it here we're like we'll set up one dumbbell each we'll set up half the bar each like not only does it save you time but it's also just like almost gym etiquette like it's just the the courteous thing to do and it it helps save you that little bit of energy and mental stress like the more i find when i'm in the gym and i'm on my own if i'm constantly re-racking weights all the time and loading weights up i'm getting out the zone every time i do it kind I think of thing. as well like it, it's actually quite a genuine sort of topic i mean you're exerting a lot of energy if you're if you're lifting heavy and you're having to re-rack re-rack yeah, swap 20, 20s 40, 25 you're actually exerting a lot of energy in between sets yeah which you could transfer that into your working set where you get an extra few reps i think yeah that and just like the more i'm re-racking weights the less i'm in the zone like the more my music's playing through the drop whilst I'm re-racking and whatever, yeah, it just like completely it doesn't knock my focus. But at that point in time, I'm a little bit less like there. Whereas if you've got someone with you and you're both loading weights together, it takes half the time, half the time between sets. You're right into that next set. Yeah. Like the quicker you're going into your next set, the the easier it's going to be to remain in the zone. Mm. You know, the less mm. you're looking at your phone there's a lot of things that help you sort of keep yourself in that mental state ready ready to lift heavy ready to train ready to be productive you know yeah like i think just like before we start finishing off do you when you're doing like your paperwork or whatever it is how do you want your environment to be around like your rather than people one of the topics we haven't touched is your surrounding environment like the objects around you for example so i may have touched on in an earlier episode i don't like training alone at home because when i train alone at home my xbox is right there my phone is right there my tv is right there the football's right there you know what i mean like mm. it'd be very easy for me to get distracted in that environment yeah. of my house and just start watching something oh yeah the same can be said about doing uh, admin work or programming or messaging people if i'm there with my phone around me my xbox there my tv there mm. it's going to take me longer to get these tasks done rather than just doing them yeah no i think if i'm if i'm doing admin work or paperwork i just want to be by myself realistically yeah i'll knock everything Focus. off so if i'm on, doing it on my phone put my phone onto like airplane mode you know put some i i i personally listen to music when working i just find it helps me yeah um i like to listen to something i like to listen to something just to be a bit more productive yeah uh but yeah no if i'm doing admin or paperwork i just want to be by myself really i'll just go into a room put some music on do my work yeah. half hour an hour however long it takes me and then it's done you know what i actually find doing admin work in a dark room helps as well i don't know what it is i know it's not it's not very good for your eyes and your sleep patterns yeah but if i'm in a darker room on my own with just my computer screen in front of me typing or whatever Mm. It helps me just focus because without any other lights around me, without anything, I'm not going to be like looking around like, oh, look, that's a TV over there, whatever it is. Yeah. I can just sit here. Like, imagine the studio lights were off now. I don't know if you guys might get a feel for it, but all that's on are three LED just panel three lights. Three massive lights. Yeah. So turn those off. This do, this room would be quite dark. It'd yeah. be quite dim. I would like to surround myself in like this kind of environment because nothing's drawing my eyesight. Nothing's mm. like distracting me and i think for admin work that kind of thing like that's the that's the environment i would seek out yeah is solitude or if i'm struggling with something i'd want to be around people that do the same thing i do right if i'm struggling with p 
pay my taxes as yeah. somebody self-employed. I would want to be around other self-employed people because no, they yeah, well, I mean, it, it, well, there's times that I can't ever last. I just can't say it. Where where yeah. we've been, you know, just DW Sports. Uh, yeah, DW Sports. Yeah. No, where where we've just been like chilling in between clients. Say, I've got a bit of work to do. A's got a bit of work to do, and we just like I don't know, just sit on the sofa together, just bosh it out. Yeah, yeah. Because again, he I, if I look up and I see him working on his laptop, it encourages me to work a little in a way. I guess yeah. as well, you're being productive. I'm just not gonna sit there doing nothing. Yeah. I need to be productive as well. Um, and again, it there. just comes back to the topic of today, which is just surround yourself with I the think, correct people. To be fair, we're going into that twenty-five minute mark again, so we'll have to reset the camera again. But I've just thought of one more, one more topic. Um, so basically, I'm thinking how to remain on diet, your environment when it comes to dieting and things. Um, <laughs> we're gonna reset the. Re- I've got a few a reset few points it. I can make here, so I'm gonna reset the camera real quick again. You guys, again, without me rambling on this time shouldn't notice a single change other than it will be a quick cut like a little and we're back so again you shouldn't have noticed anything maybe just a quick cut but like i briefly uh teased you all with uh we're gonna go into oh you're teasing me oh you're teasing me in naughty naughty uh i'm gonna come up uh, i'm gonna come up i'm gonna talk about a couple things that can help you with your diet and your environment when it comes to dieting so a lot of the people listening to this are going to be working nine till fives, have like a communal lunch room where everyone brings in their lunch. They all sit together. They all chat about Coronation Street and they all eat their lunch. Now, if 90% of that people in the room, uh, 90% of the people in that room are eating poorly and you're trying to eat a salad and they're all eating ham sandwiches or whatever, that's not going to be a helpful environment to you because you're going to be looking at that and getting tempted. And all these people are going to be like, oh, why are you eating a salad? Why are you eating this? And if they don't understand your goals or they don't understand nutrition or anything themselves, beyond like the basic ham sandwich, bad, salad, good. Now, if they don't understand the deeper reason why you're eating things and why you're hitting macros and why you're doing all this, they're going to start questioning that and try and tempt you over to eating poorly, if that makes sense. Yeah. Or they could very easily tempt you into eating poorly. Yeah. The same as if someone sat there eating biscuits with their tea and you've got a black coffee or a green tea. Like, yeah. those kind of environments are not helpful for you dieting and your nutrition, which again, massive part of fitness. So in that kind of situation, I would recommend, and what I always used to do was I would heat my food up and then I would go and eat in my own, on my own in my car or on my own at my desk. Sure. Yeah, just because all these people, no one, where I used to work in accounts, no one understood the gym really or like nutrition beyond the basic food pyramid or whatever it's called. And so I'd be there eating like reheated eggs and chicken and rice or whatever. Nasty. To try and get my protein, my fats up. Reheated eggs are great, is it? But, do you know what I mean? I'd be sat there eating this kind of thing. I didn't really mind. It is what it is. But then you've got a done. load of people saying, you know, sitting there eating biscuits or whatever. Or someone's birthday and they all bring cake in. Yeah, and they're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. do you want cake? Like, yeah. not a good environment to be in. Especially if you're just setting out on your on your journey. Yeah. Um, and I think just like one last brief point. <laughs> the same could be said around your house. It's a little bit harder if you've got young kids. But if you're the one, if you live on your own or you live with a partner or, you know, whatever, and you're the one doing the shopping, you can very easily control what you will eat in a week. Like I, I live with my 15 year old brother, but I do all the shopping. So you check our cupboards, you're going to struggle to find anything too unhealthy. It doesn't cost much more to eat healthy. I think there's a perceived difference in like price between eating chicken and rice and eating chicken nuggets and whatever like it does cost more but it doesn't have to like if you're uh, buying frozen or if you're buying in bulk it it costs the same long term as buying all these snacky foods to fill them up and buy like i spend the same amount buying chicken and rice and healthy foods and whatever for me and my brother as i did when i was just you know generally food shopping and you know, but then you're you're saving yourself money on snacks and unhealthy things. But yeah, I think if you and and like when when I used to live with my my uh, mom, brother, sister, like all of us, um, I used to have my own cupboard even, 
So I just completely took a whole cupboard and said, right, this is my cupboard because in that cupboard, I kept all of my food. So not only could no one else eat them, so no one was like exhausting my 90 calorie cereal bars or whatever, um, my cool healthy snacks that I loved so much. Whatever they are, no one could eat them except for me. And I also wasn't having to look at all this unhealthy stuff when I opened the cupboard or opened the fridge or whatever. Because I had my own shelf in the fridge, own shelf in the freezer, own cupboard. So I wasn't going in anywhere or going near anyone else's stuff to be tempted into anything poor. And I think just little little key tips like that can help you so much with succeeding on your diet or however you want to look at it or you know just your overall nutrition. Um, I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that that kind of thing. It was just like a closing point for five minutes or so. Yeah, I mean, look, I'd, I'd sort of go at it from a different angle in terms of I'm still living at home um with my with my parents so for me i i do a lot of my own shopping um so i buy my own foods to be honest i'm quite fortunate like the house that i live in is generally pretty healthy i mean your your dad has just for your dad has a personal trainer and things like that if if you go through the cupboards like there's actually it's quite healthy so (laughs) for example there's been times where I'm, i'm having a cheat meal or something and i'm going in the cupboards and I, I can't find fucking anything, like, in terms yeah. of to cheat on. So, in that sense, it's annoying. Yeah. But just, no, when I'm generally dieting, you know, like, it's good because there's no distractions. So, where I live, there's no, you know, biscuits in the cupboard. There's no uh, cake in the in the fucking fridge or, or whatever. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah, fridge? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, if you want to keep it fresh. <laughs> well, no. Nah, you know I mean? If, well, if no, I'm, what I'm saying is, uh, but I meal prep as well. So, yeah. where, so, right now, for example, I'm... I'm probably what day is it today? So it's it's a Thursday. I'm probably prepped until Sunday in terms of meals. So I meal prep my foods in advance, um, and and that as well. I think that's massive. If if I was giving advice to someone in terms of how to stay on track yeah. within nutrition um, and diet, it's meal prep because then you've got no distractions and your meals just there. For example, I've come around A's today. I've bought a meal with me. I brought yeah. chicken and rice post workout, and it's just there. Yeah. there's no distractions exactly i mean i think just for just for like uh to be what's the word just so everyone understands your your dad also has a personal trainer and things like yeah. that so you're not living in like an unhealthy household like obviously if you've got a personal trainer if you've got a trainer you're like gonna be you're more you're, you're more likely yeah, to you're gonna be trying to make conscious lifestyle. house choices to justify why yeah. you've got a personal trainer yeah you're trying to make conscious choices but yeah you massively control what you buy what you put in your body and the environment you have like if you've got fridges and shelves or whatever stocked full of shit shite yeah you're gonna you're gonna struggle with your diet more than if you've got shelves stocked full with Course. good healthy clean foods low calorie foods or whatever you know what i mean so yeah just make sure you put yourself in an environment to succeed Obviously, we've given you quite a few tips here along with some waffle um, to as digest always, through, baby. as always. The king of waffling. You um, certainly are. Nah, but, you know, we got to stretch it to an hour. No, I'm joking. We, we don't have to. But, like, you know, we, we're trying to get our personalities across. We're trying to just, like, have a have a chat, basically. Like, there's no... When we come in here, there's no real... Plan. Plan, <laughs> yeah. We have a couple of notes... And we have an idea of a topic we want to talk about and discuss. And that's what we do. We, we yeah. use our notes and then we just basically, almost in a way, wing it. We just kind of just go go wherever the, I think that's, the path That's how it should is. be, though. That's how it should be. 100%. Because then, yeah. you know, like, if you're watching this or listening to this and it sound, there's times where it's a bit silent or there's times where we're going, um, and, you no, know, like, yeah, it, like it doesn't the, really make sense. In the first sense. episode. That's how it should be. In my, in my episode, opinion, because released. it makes it more relatable and more genuine. Yeah. So I think in the first episode we just released, we said, I'm um, a bit too much to start with. But if you're like flowing in a conversation, you're trying to think on the spot, you're going to be like, you know, you're going to say something like, um, you're going to fill a gap. Um, like if you ask me a question, I'm just going to be like, oh yeah, well, uh, you know, and I'm trying to fill in, you know, I'm trying to think for that half second or whatever so I can answer properly. But I think I mean, like we're waffling one, about the word, um, but it's fucking great. Episode one, I think when I was listening back to it, it triggered me a little bit because we kept saying um in the intro, but bear in mind that was the first episode and 
before we started recording, we both burst out laughing. Like, it was so awkward. I'm a long way since like, that, baby. When we're just talking, like, if we're talking when we're training, it's easy, like, it is what it is. But as soon as you get these mics out and the camera out, it is, like, so much more awkward. It's kind of mad. But no, um, I think we can end it there for today. Um, yep. So I just want to say thank you all for watching. Um, like I said, episode one just dropped. So thank you for all the support on that episode. Episode two is out on the Monday the 12th when gyms reopen. With It's full of our tips for getting started in the gym. They, they would have heard that. Though. Making progress. You would have heard that by now. <laughs> I just for, I kind of just realized that we're, we are pre-recording by like three weeks. <laughs> so... But yeah, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for all the continued support. Um, and if you're getting this far in here, please leave a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I mean, fair fucking play. Yeah, if you're getting if you're this, this far, far in here, fair Jesus. Play. Uh, you know what? Fair if, fucking play. Uh, we should give someone. A, we should give them like a, a thing to like message us to to let us know they got this far in. <laughs> That'd be joke. <laughs> Imagine. Well, message us the words, warrior. If you got this far in, message us the words, warrior, and. Uh, we, we will be sure to give you a pat on the back for getting this far in. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching. Um, make sure you follow us and subscribe and like and do whatever to all of our socials. Help us get out there a little bit more. Um, as much as we enjoy this, we are obviously trying to get somewhere with this. So yeah, it massively helps us if you just you do those simple little things and then help you know rate us on Spotify. We should be on Apple Podcasts by the time this comes out as well. Thank you all for watching and or listening. Big up people on YouTube. Um, I just pointed at the camera for anyone listening. And then hopefully we shall hear you all. Hear you all. See you all. We won't even see you. Hopefully you'll hear us and see us in the just very waffling. next episode, just mate. Waffling. And uh, yeah. Oh and, oh, and soon enough we'll be we'll be getting guests on to record in oh, very shortly. There's if and we've got a couple of big one, ones. There's hopefully. one guest I've got in line. And it's in the works, and I swear to God, if I can if it comes get through, it's Jesus, big. if I can it's get big. this brother on, it's big, right? It's, it's massive. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next one.